Hey guys, Carl Sadago here from NordicSight.com and today's Midday Power Up is about how to stay in contact with your college friends once you graduate. It's that time of year where college kids are graduating and they're starting off with their new lives, taking on new careers, maybe even moving away or moving back to the respective hometowns. And it can be a really rough time these first few months once you graduate because these are people that you've spent four years with, uh, maybe you've lived with them, but you've built memories and they've become a big part of your identity and they're practically like family. So this can be a very emotionally draining time, uh, very confusing, and it's gonna be a big, big opportunity for you to grow as a person and to, um, and to practice keeping in touch with these people, okay, which is gonna be a big part of your life in the future, you know, making contacts and, and staying in touch with them. So this video is especially for my two friends, Ann and Leslie, who are actually moving out of their place today. Um, they've been roommates for quite some time now, and I figured I'd make this video for anybody who's graduating um, or anybody who finds themselves apart from their friends and family. So hopefully maybe I can make you two cry with this video. <laughs> I'm kidding, but uh, I'm gonna share with you guys my three tips on how I was able to stay in contact with my friends since I've graduated back in 08. And I can honestly say that since then, I've probably seen my close friends a handful of times, um, either at weddings or specifically planned dates um, for us to see each other. So if you follow these three tips, more than likely you'll be able to stay in contact with those people. So don't cry, relax. It's actually a great time because you guys will be starting new lives and have a lot more to share and, and more memories to create. So three tips, guys. First tip is plan a trip, but more importantly, take that trip. Because what we have the tendency of doing is we'll think, okay, hey, you know, I'll come out and see you or um, I can't wait to check out you in your new place, see your new life. And next thing you know, we start thinking about all the reasons why we can't. We're like, I don't know if I have enough money or am I going to be able to take time off of work or, um, you know, you start thinking about the logistics. And next thing you know, you talk yourself out of it. And before you've even taken that trip, you've already found reasons why you can't. So taking that trip as soon as you can is going to be the most powerful thing because once you get it done and out of the way you'll realize wow that wasn't that bad i could probably do this a ton more times you know it's it's really not that big a deal so um plan a trip and i've done a little bit of research on the best times to fly okay so if you're gonna fly domestically okay i don't know about internationally but if you're gonna fly domestically the best times to fly are about seven and a half weeks out to about three months out okay anything past that and it becomes a little more expensive. Obviously, if you fly a day before or a week before, it's gonna be super expensive, but even 11 months out can be kind of, can be kind of pricey. So uh, according to my research, seven and a half weeks to about three months is the best time to fly. If you're gonna fly domestically, Tuesday and Wednesdays are a lot cheaper. Um, Fridays and Sundays are more expensive, okay? If you're gonna do a weekend trip, it's better to leave on a Saturday and stay till a Monday or Tuesday rather than leaving on a Thursday or Friday and staying till Sunday, okay? So if price is absolutely important to you, those are the best times for weekends. If you plan on staying for a full week, then you can do a Tuesday to Tuesday or a Wednesday to Wednesday, and those will be the cheapest times, okay? Now this is on average. Um, this is not like totally concrete, but according to um, uh, um, a couple of sites that I checked out, that was pretty much the um, general um, consensus for, for the best times to fly okay if you're smart and you look at places like southwest airlines they have one to get away tickets which are really cheap um, cheaper than most other airlines uh, southwest i personally i love to fly southwest because you get um to check in your bags for free uh they just have awesome customer service and they're a really cool airline spirit also has really cheap flights so if you are trying to visit people that are out of state because there's no excuse if you live in the same state as someone then this video you shouldn't even be watching because you can take a dang three hour, four hour you know, road trip to go check them out. That should not be a problem. But if you live out of state like me, I live in Florida now and all my friends are back in Chicago, well, it takes a little bit more planning and you have to shift your schedule around a little bit more. So follow those tips as far as um, flying and you'd be surprised as to how often you can actually see those people that live out of state. Second tip, utilize technology, okay? I don't think people realize how incredibly fortunate we are to have things like Skype or Facebook or even Snapchat, okay, or just a phone in general. I mean, think about back to the times when we had to travel by horse and horse carriage and, and you know, sailing or walking, okay? We didn't have the luxury of just 
let me go on my computer and Skype someone and see them face to face and talk to them in real time. I mean, that's incredible. That is honestly incredible. So utilize technology. Um, there are people that I still text regularly every couple of weeks or every couple of months back from college. And it's just little things that, that are kind of inside jokes to us um, that once we, we text, it kind of brings back old memories and some good feelings. And it just keeps that connection alive. You know, something as small as a text can do that, let alone something like a nice, you know, hour, two hour, three hour long Skype call. Okay. And uh, with Skype, you can even do conference calls so you can include more people. Um, so utilize the technology, guys. It's honestly a blessing and a luxury to have it this day and age. And it makes things a lot easier than it used to be. So there's really no excuse to not stay in touch with those people that, that you care about. So um, that's tip number two. Tip number three, and this is kind of the one that's going to be the most important, is be the leader. Take initiative. All right. You'd be surprised to see how many times you can get something going just by saying a quick, you know, quick mass text to everybody, you know, hey guys, I think we should get together. Let's create some new memories. I miss you guys. I want to see you. What do you say we get together at this place at this date? Okay. And chances are you'll get replies from people saying, hey, that sounds awesome. You know, I've, I've been wanting to see you. I was just thinking about you. Uh, that weekend doesn't work, but how about this one? And then word of mouth spreads and everyone starts calling and texting. It's how about this time? How about that time? And little by little, the date becomes more and more concrete and solidified. And next thing you know, you guys have a set time to meet each other, to see each other. And it's awesome because then you have something to look forward to and work towards. And it just makes life awesome when you have something to look forward to. So be the leader, take initiative, um, and just realize that you create your own reality, okay? Um, you don't have to be a victim of circumstance. You can take charge and plan trips. Like I've said, I live here in Florida and I've already seen my friends back in Chicago a few times. And, you know, I might have taken a little sacrifice on my part, but, you know, I was able to see them and I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world because the relationships I have with people are, it's more important than money. It's more important than anything to me personally. So, um, you know, uh, do what you have to do, but take initiative, take charge. And that will inspire other people because once they see how easy it is, wow, all I had to do is shoot a text to see everybody. They'll start to do the same and hopefully they'll include you. So hopefully those three tips helps guys. Um, it's not that hard to stay in touch with people. In fact, this is going to be one of the skills you're going to have to develop over time because as you grow up and you set off into the world, you're going to meet a lot of new people. You're going to have a lot of crazy interactions with, with people that you might talk to for a few minutes that will make the biggest impact of your life. And, and um, learning how to stay in touch with them and to keep that connection strong is a very useful skill and something that I think is probably one of the most beneficial and, and worthwhile ones to have in life. So hopefully you guys liked the video. Uh, if it helped you out, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, comment, like, all that. And if you guys would like to receive any health and lifestyle coaching from me, you can visit me at www.noend-insights.com. And um, shoot me a message and uh, we can go from there. So enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and stay in touch. Later.